some of John McCreary's uh, students, and I think you'll want to take a look there. So it's about uh, about a hundred yards uh, south of south of the building, and it's scheduled to be right after after this lecture tonight. Uh, I thought, are there any of John's students here? I think they're all out working and putting it together right now. It's a real pleasure to uh, to have that. Uh, activity going on and to have uh, just kind of by chance but also by uh, design with the work he's doing with a steel company here in town it's nice to have John David Mooney the sculptor from Chicago with us tonight John if you would if you would stand and be recognized John has worked on and off with uh, with our students uh, since I don't know 10 or 12 or 14 years ago when he did his first uh, uh, sound and light show at the uh, Indianapolis Museum of Art and our students have worked with him several times now in Chicago and we hope there'll be some other things planned. It's very nice to have uh, Simon Christiansen uh, with us again. This is his third visit to Ball State. He came here first when we had the visiting tour of Danish architects. And when I said that I would take the tour around uh, Chicago and Indiana and Kentucky, I was told that two guys would come from Denmark and there'd be uh, one guy leading the crew and he would have an assistant named Simon Christiansen who would take care of all the things like counting the luggage. And so I can tell you that he's very good at that, uh, at that luggage counting on a tour. So he's good at a lot of other things uh, as well. We've got a group of students and uh, Bob Taylor, who took his Scandi Soviet tour, who would tell you that he's a wonderful host when you uh, get to Denmark, where you spent three full days with our students in, uh, in Denmark and took them uh, to uh, all of the historic monuments. And when you go visit architects, ordinarily they like to show you their work. And it's nice to visit uh, Simon because he takes you to show you all the monuments of Denmark and he's worked on them. He's restored something at Hamlet's Castle and at Helsinore. He's He's restored the uh, Royal Palace, uh, Emalion Bohr in uh, Copenhagen. He has uh, had a, a significant uh, architecture and architectural preservation practice for 25 years in, uh, in Copenhagen. He uh, first graduated from the construction uh, technology school and then he graduated after he learned how to put buildings together he learned how to design them at the Royal uh, Academy in, uh, in Copenhagen. And he has uh, been an important force in architectural preservation in Denmark ever since. It's very nice to have him teaching here for the, for the second time and lecturing here in this room for the second time. Simon Christiansen. Thank you. It's very nice to hear about such a sophisticated person. And, uh, I heart, uh, I have hard recognizing myself in it, but uh, thank you, Charlie. And uh, thank you for mentioning uh, the visit in, in Copenhagen. I had a great pleasure, and my, also my uh, architects at the office had a great, very great pleasure of meeting the Ball State students there. And, uh, I think we got a lot out of uh, this visit. We learned something from, from the, the kids there. OK. Um, I, uh, I'm aware that uh, last time I was here, I also was supposed to present uh, some of my own work in Denmark. And uh, it doesn't make much sense two years after to come and present it once more. So. Uh, 
the, the slideshow tonight will be uh, slightly different, though, um, uh, of course, I, I will uh, center around my own work. Um, the show will show you uh, some pictures from my lovely Danish country. Uh, I found out that uh, a lot of uh, my students here and also other persons uh, tend to tell me that, well, Denmark is a, it's a lovely place. Th those, those towns in Sweden are so lovely. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I will show you a few pictures of uh, what Denmark is when it's best, when it's, uh, when it's, it, uh, there was a, some Americans who tried to create a little Denmark in, in California. They called it Solvang, a little place uh, north of, of uh, Los Angeles, and, uh, and I think they didn't really get to the point. Uh, I'll tr try to, to uh, show you the real thing. Um, and then I will show you some of, the, of my own work, but I will center around uh, some of the craftsman's work in, in uh, restoration, since uh, uh, quite a few of uh, my students demand me to, to tell them a little about uh, the traditional craftsman's work in, in restoration. So uh, I um, managed to find uh, a series of, of slides, uh, for example, of uh, how a, a thatched roof is made still in Denmark. And there's some other things in it. So uh, those of you who are not students, and there's some of you here, um, they have to, to, to uh, be patient to look at this too. But maybe it will be interesting for you also. And uh, I will end up with, with um, uh, examples of the standard of, of uh, the most common things that, that an architect will meet in his uh, or her practice. And uh, in the very end, I will show you uh, a few slides of what we did in uh, the studio during the last three weeks. This might be interesting for others than my own students. So uh, please this is a Danish flag. Uh, for those of you who know Denmark will, will also know that this is in fact the when it has this uh, two tails, it's, it's uh, the state flag, the flag uh, belonging to the queen. And, uh, and this is Denmark. Uh, Denmark is not uh, a flat landscape with farms. It has some uh, uh, brutal nature to uh, to the left you will see the the calcium coast of uh, one of the islands south of Copenhagen and uh, and the other picture shows some interesting uh, artifacts from the German occupation of Denmark during 40 to 45 uh, it's quite interesting to to visit the west coast of, of Denmark facing the North Sea, um, those structures there, they was, they was digged down in the dunes. And uh, the warts have eaten the dunes and exposed these concrete structures. And um, this is also uh, a part of our history. And uh, it's certainly nice structures. But beside this brutal thing, uh, uh, Denmark is uh, 2,350 islands, approximately. So um, uh, every Dane will have relations to the sea, and uh, 
and Danes, as we have this short summer, uh, there's a culture around uh, uh, swimming in the sea, even it's cold compared to, to many other countries. And uh, the countries, the, the, the islands would have uh, woods like the one I present you for here. Uh, and all of them will have that kind of, of nature. And here's more of it. Um, this is, uh, all what you see here is cultural landscape. All of it is man-made. And uh, this is my little summer cottage. I can't stay upright in it. And uh, the little road here, that, that's the entrance to one of the very nice mansions we have. Uh, big farmhouses, in fact. And uh, the peasant, they uh, had this uh, sort of house with thatch roof and, and uh, half timbered houses. And uh, the one I show here to the left will be about six or eight hundred years old and kept for all these years. And the fishermen uh, along the west coast, especially, they would have uh, houses like that, also with test roofs, and uh, and uh, it would normally be wooden houses. And uh, and uh, this is not paint; it's uh, it's asphalt that it's uh, treated with. And uh, the local colors. And um, you should maybe know that all Danish farms will be the uh, four buildings put together. So there is a, an inner court that create a uh, much nicer climate for the family and uh, a nicer climate for, uh, for growing flowers and that sort of thing. Uh, I would say that, that, that what I show you here is a part of, of the building culture of uh, the northern countries, the Scandinavian countries. And uh, uh, those are not buildings from a uh, museum. This is, uh, uh, in fact, it's, it's farms that still function. And are, the family still lives there and do business. Um, when the farm grow bigger, you will have that kind of, of uh, uh, buildings, and uh, and uh, owner would would maybe uh, uh, gain money enough to make such a little tea house. This is in fact a uh, a little pavilion in a garden uh, to the right hand side, uh, uh, only for the purpose of. of drinking tea, and uh, you can sit uh, in it and overlook the sea. A very beautiful spot. So, yeah. And when the farms uh, uh, grow even bigger, uh, so do the houses, so do the mansions. And uh, <coughs> the one to the, to the right is a very typical uh, mansion uh, in in most of, of Denmark. And uh, the one to the left is not very typical, though we have about eight of these kind of castles in, uh, in, um, in Denmark. This is uh, uh, built by a, uh, uh, you would call it a barrier, a uh, farmer and uh, officer <coughs> in the King's Army. It's built in 1577, and it hasn't been touched since, except for uh, they built in a uh, toilet and the bathroom and a new kitchen. It's exactly as it was built, and I know it because I restored it. And uh, uh, when you come up to uh, uh, last century, you have uh, estates with, with uh, mansions like this. This is uh, from the mid of last century, though there will be 
uh, part of it that is uh, older, since since that kind of buildings would be would be rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. And that is actually the interior of, of this Snagenburg Castle. So that was that was uh, my country. This is how it, it looks there. Um, my student also asked me, uh, uh, what do you do for, for uh, study in architecture? And uh, I found these two pictures, which is taken in 65. Uh, and uh, this is uh, our drill for, for working with structures. This is a group of, uh, of students that uh, have made this uh, Buckminster Fowler Dome as training. And, uh, and I particularly like the little uh, uh, fitting we made to, to put them together. And um, to the left-hand side, you will see uh, my very first measured drawing going to the architectural school. And, uh, and I show you uh, the other one, which is uh, uh, from one of our projects, uh, to compare them. Uh, and I remember my teacher uh, told me that, that uh, this drawing here of the old Norwegian timber house was much too nice. And uh, he would think that it was better to bring in Donald Duck magazine. It was not professional. He wanted it to look like the other one I showed. So, uh, this, was the, this was the education. Before I went to uh, the Royal Academy of Fine Arts, I happened to design my very first building when I was 18 years old. I had just started at the uh, building constructor school. You have no such thing in America, but it's, you are, if you're learned as a craftsman, uh, you will normally start at a school where you will learn the technical skill of, uh, of drawing, uh, technical drawings and that sort of thing. And so so uh, you are a little more than a craftsman, but, but not very much more. And, uh, and this building was, in fact, put in a, a garden in a garden behind the, the local fire station. It's my hometown in, in, in Jotland. And, uh, and uh, I'm sort of proud of looking at it today, 20, 28 years later after it's, it's, it has been built in 28 years. And uh, uh, unfortunately, they took away the garden and the big trees and uh, created a parking lot around it. But uh, this is opus number one. And this is opus number two. Um, uh, Fifty detached houses. I live in one of them. And uh, the left picture shows it when it was built uh, in winter time, in fact. And uh, the picture over there is uh, last winter. So uh, this was the very start. From that on, I, uh, I mainly worked with restoration. And uh, as I told you, I'll try to concentrate on, on, uh, on showing uh, which kind of old building methods we, uh, we work with. And uh, this is the church that is uh, part of the, the Christiansborg Castle, the, the castle that housed the governments in, uh, in Copenhagen. Denmark. Uh, it's from 1822, uh, and uh, we had to replace the lantern light on top of the cupola and also uh, renew the cupola. And, uh, and uh, the opening up there, it's hard to see, but it's actually uh, 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 about uh, nine or ten feet wide. And it's, it's a big sheet of glass that is put up there. And uh, all of this is made in copper, including the beams. And handmade, of course. Um, and I show you these two pictures because uh, 
this is this is the kind of, of bit buildings I have had the great luck of working with, and, uh, and this is um, your, a castle that that uh, was created in, the, in around 1600. It was partly uh, burned down in 1853 and rebuilt, and uh, uh, it's contained mainly a building on, on an island in a big lake, uh, but beside that, uh, in the park, you will find small buildings like the one I show you to the right. That is, in fact, the, the uh, bathhouse for, for the castle area. And uh, uh, and uh, on this castle, it has mainly been uh, uh, replacing limestone details and constructions, and that goes from from uh, parts that is uh, part of the structure of the building, but also uh, things like this uh, uh, little uh, portico, which was used for writing purposes. Uh, the, the knights would, would uh, in the summertime, they would ride uh, with lances uh, against the little ring that was uh, put in the middle of uh, the portico, and uh, they, will, they will compete in, in uh, hitting the ring there. It's a very traditional uh, Danish uh, game. It was, uh, it was hit by a truck in, in 40. 1944 and never put up again. And I found this thing uh, in the garden of the castle. It was just uh, put away, uh, though the iron thing uh, in the mid that was put at the attic and uh, and all the it, this picture is taken right after we restored it, and all the the light uh, stones is new ones. So you can see there was there was many. The part of that could be reused, uh, and uh, it's, it was a quite safe uh, reconstruction. And uh, uh, you will see here uh, one of the entrances to the castle, and, uh, and uh, you can see here how bad the, the air pollution is treating these uh, limestone works. Most of these limestones was uh, digged out of the earth in, in Sweden, and they contained a lot of the calcium uh, that, uh, that uh, and it, this created an effect that when you have this very acid rain, the calcium would disappear and, and the stone will, will uh, go apart since it's, since it's the calcium that binds it together. So w what we do is to replace all the stone with German limestones that is uh, not containing any calcium, but is 100% uh, 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 quartz uh, composed. And uh, uh, all the stone is still hand carved. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the stonemason will, will, uh, will use machinery to, uh, to make uh, bigger blocks, but all the decoration is uh, still made in the hand. Stonemasons, not sculptures, but stonemasons that is uh, are qualified for that kind of job. And uh, another castle we uh, worked with. Uh, this, I have no pictures from from the in, really from the interior since this is the. The Queen's uh, summer castle, her private residence. So, uh, so I'm not supposed to show pictures of this, but uh, it's surely a nice place. It's about 30 kilometers north of Copenhagen in a very, very huge park, and uh, and uh, the family did, they enjoy it really much to 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 go there, and they, I think they will every year to make sure to get to go there in April and May or May already. Uh, but we we uh, we had the chance to rebuild two tea pavilions uh, down there. There's a little bridge, and uh, the queen goes uh, sailing there, um, and uh, and then she can for her guests she can serve tea in these two pavilions, uh, of course in the in the summertime, and uh, and I took this the chance of showing you this this little picture to the. 
write, which is a little uh, new constructed uh, bridge in her private garden that made it possible for her to to uh, walk over to this little island in the mid of the uh, octagonal uh, lake and uh, and deal with her flowers over there. It's uh, it's carrying her and her husband's initials in the mid, and they will say them. Them, they would say they designed uh, the bridge and, uh, and we just helped them. Um, I also happened to find this picture of, uh, of a, a painter who is doing the marble work uh, at this castle. Uh, the putties, the small figures and, and, the, and uh, the parts that surround the door is real marble but all the rest of this is painted. Uh, it's very typical for, for what happened in Europe that, that the two putties and these, uh, we call it the Orkai, uh, was acquired by the king when he studied architecture in uh, Italy. And he bought four sets of the things, plus four uh, uh, fronts to fireplaces. And coming home to Denmark, he ordered uh, the the uh, royal architect to create a room around these pieces he bought. Um, it was, of course, very scarce to create a real room, but uh, but uh, this this architect was uh, quite uh, successful. And uh, uh, the painter who who uh, do this, he's of course uh, a guy with a special interest for this and. Uh, and there is only three persons uh, in Denmark today that do this uh, really nice. So we made a competition between them. So they had to do uh, each uh, a part to, uh, to uh, had the chance to, uh, to uh, show us that they were the best. And he was chosen. And uh, all what you see here is what he painted. Um, this is the, the Queen's uh, uh, quarter in Copenhagen City, the, the so-called Malienborg Castle. Uh, we are on the way in, in replacing totally the, the facade since this facade was also made in Swedish limestone that couldn't, that will not stand the acid rain. And you see some details from, from the newer part. And, uh, and uh, I will show you this picture since uh, normally you would expect such, uh, expect such a building to be of solid stone. Uh, but it's certainly not because uh, it's still an expensive piece of material. Uh, so uh, what we did was to take down the cladding of the house and uh, replace this. And by the way, we found out that they had put the windows into the building before they clad it with limestone. And uh, we had a lot of trouble to, to find out how to, to do this. And, uh, and uh, as you can see uh, on the right-hand picture, we also uh, uh, now take the rest of risk of making a uh, facade that is ventilated on the backside. It has never been so before. But uh, I believe that this is the way to, uh, to keep the uh, coloring, uh, the aging of the facade down to a minimum. Um, this uh, building is full of, of uh, Rococo decoration. And all this is also uh, cut uh, by hand by uh, Craftsmen's, or I would may maybe I should say skilled workers, because uh, it is a, a, a quite normal uh, uh, profession in in Denmark, and uh, and the picture to the right shows how much there was left of of, of uh, some of the windows in this building. Um, this is also an example of of. Uh, uh, the sort of restoration. I, I wouldn't call it uh, a real restoration. This building uh, had to have the roof replaced. 
and uh, we tried to gain some of the quality that it had. Uh, as you can see, all the gray windows uh, in the building is, in fact, uh, uh, put in much later. It's a building from around 1600, and it's the Royal Library, Library of Copenhagen. And uh, the roof there was put up in, in, uh, in 1922, and we had to replace it anyhow. And we found out that the, the, the windows up there was not used to anything, the chimneys was not used to anything, and it disturbed me a lot that, that uh, uh, the roof from the adjoining building was sort of uh, blending with, uh, with the uh, library there. So we decided to, uh, to uh, replace the tiled roof with a copper roof and, uh, and uh, keep the old form of it. That was uh, why we, we uh, uh, made new, uh, I don't know what it's called, the timber work. And uh, I'll bring this picture to show you how uh, a uh, copper roof still is made in Denmark and, and made by hand. Uh, if you will make a uh, modern uh, office building or something like that, and for some reason you choose a a copper roof, you will make it totally by machine, and you will you will put all the copper together with a machine that works very very efficient. But uh, the roof would not be so nice since uh, it will lack uh, this texture, which which uh, which make a uh, aging copper roof very nice. So we did it by hand. Let me see some of the details here. Uh, this is a very simple and cheap uh, piece of, of uh, roof. We, we could we could play uh, a lot uh, with it, but th this was not the time to do it. And I told you th uh, that uh, my student would like to see how you make a thatch roof. Uh, this building is a uh, a uh, lunch place and uh, bathrooms and. Uh, and a workshop for the gardeners at the uh, at the prime minister's summer palace, and uh, it's uh, halfway dig down in the earth to make it discreet, and it's it it's equipped with a thatch roof uh, in order to uh, to make it uh, modest and discreet in the garden. So uh, here you will see how it progresses during a winter time. The, the straw comes from Denmark, too. We, uh, we have a lot of small uh, uh, in-seas and, uh, and uh, lakes where we can uh, cut this straw in the wintertime. Uh, you will not find many uh, new thatch roof in Denmark since uh, uh, it's rather expensive to make. And uh, when you have the roof, uh, it will be very hard to have insurance on, since when it uh, when it got uh, into fire, it will disappear very quick. Um, and uh, when you can expect a lifetime on a tiled roof of uh, 50 years, you can expect 25 years for a thatch roof. Then it has to to be trimmed or replaced. And this is how it comes to look. And there, there's some details of how this is done. It's binded uh, with with uh, iron thread to uh, to the uh, timber construction. And um, uh, it's it's considered to be a, a work of a craftsman and. Uh, we are fine. I think we have 5.5 million people in Denmark, and I think there's about 40 of, of these persons that can still do this kind of work. And uh, since it's a very precious roof, uh, these these guys are or girls. There's some girls that do it. Uh, they are pretty clever doing it, and uh, and they know that we expect something special from them. 
is the tools. Uh, this tool with the holes in there, it's, it's used to, to uh, uh, move all the scrolls uh, up uh, on place so, so you have this flat surface uh, with, with uh, equal exposed part of, of uh, the straw. Uh, the top of the roof uh, uh, will, will um, have a different uh, construction according to the county it's made in. This is a, uh, 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 Sjælland is the, the biggest island in Denmark, and on Sjælland we have the, our capital, Copenhagen. Uh, and this is the tradition from Sjælland. In Jutland, the, the big peninsula that goes up along the west, uh, along the North Sea, that they will have uh, uh, crossed wood uh, on top of, of hay, simply. And the, the wood part is just to, to keep the hay uh, on top of the roof that it don't fl fly away in the storm. And uh, here's a look of it's nearly finished. As you can see, there's only the windows uh, exposed above the, the soil there. Uh, here comes some pictures from a restoration of a Chinese pavilion in Frederiksberg uh, Garden. That, that's a little castle within Copenhagen city borders. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, if I can find out, uh, in fact, this is Copenhagen. And this, the, the, the water between Copenhagen and, and Sweden. And this is the garden we work with. Down here in this area, this well, this garden has been changed uh, uh, between this picture and this picture, uh, since it's now it's a romantic garden. But down here in this very first part of the romantic garden, uh, uh, there was created a little Chinese pavilion. Uh, this is the the project that was carried out except the tower here uh, and uh, and this is the interior uh, this project has not yet been finished since uh, it showed to be very hard to get the necessary money to do it uh, but uh, but uh, we're still working on it this is uh, part of it um, it has only three elevations since the backside is just a great painted wood uh, wall. And uh, it's situated on a little island in the Romantic Garden, and there's a Chinese bridge that leads over to it. And uh, it's made in 1799, uh, and it has been disturbed uh, during the years, but uh, well, the dragon is kept. It's still the, it's still the original dragon that is there, and, uh, but the paint work has been disturbed very much. This is uh, we are restoring the dragon, and, uh, and uh, as you can see, we we are able to keep most of the the parts. And uh, since there were some nice people who put some uh, lead on top of the wings and and uh, on top of the the uh, head or whatever here, uh, we were able to find the original paint underneath there so we could uh, recreate the original colors. And uh, this is how it looks. In fact, uh, what's really interesting but cannot be shown is that behind all this black part, uh, this is uh, a piece of plywood. We painted black on both sides. Uh, Behind them is a uh, painting of birds. On each, behind each of them, there is one or two birds, uh, of course, multicolored on a uh, dark uh, uh, black or gray background. Very nice, and uh, they, those will also be uh, restored. And uh, another example of our work, the, this hunting uh, palace, which, which was uh, uh, designed in 1736. It's believed to be the first Rococo castle in Denmark. Um, uh, you see here a, uh, a painting of it, a gouache, in fact, uh, 
that was uh, made uh, five years after it was built. And uh, as you can see there, the painter was not very precise in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in picturing the, the building. And uh, another example of our uh, measured drawings, it's, it's uh, done by photogrammetry. Uh, we don't uh, crawl around on a scaffold. We will do this by photos. And uh, we can do this within uh, a fraction of a millimeter. And here you see the reason why we have to work with these castles. This, this is also uh, uh, actually rains that takes apart all our uh, beautiful castles. This uh, castle is uh, quite interesting because when we start taking down the stones and decoration, uh, we found out that, uh, that we could, um, well, now we know the uh, mystery of a uh, certain disappeared castle, which was uh, about two kilometers from this, uh, they actually tore down one castle to build this castle with. So whenever we took a stone down, there would be a different decoration on the backside, an older one. So that's uh, very much up to date since they reused, they recycle the building materials. This is a little uh, nice thing. Uh, in front of, uh, of uh, this uh, castle was these two uh, uh, ladies sitting here. And, uh, and they, they, they must disappear. Um, but um, a lady told me that uh, in a huge uh, private garden she had seen animals like that. So I went to, to, to a, in an old garden and found both of them and had the people donate them to the states and have them put up again and uh, nothing had happened with them. I think they have, they have acquired them or stolen them in uh, around 1900 or something like that. And uh, Another example of, of uh, the work with, with uh, buildings, uh, at the left-hand side, you see a measured drawing of a uh, pallet in Copenhagen. This, this is uh, measured in, in around 1836. And uh, at the right-hand side, you see how it looks in 81 when we uh, had the commission of restoring it. It was mainly uh, the, the interior, but uh, um, we we uh, was able to bring it back at the exterior to uh, nearly the the face at its head, but uh, this many years ago, as we we put the roof back to the to the uh, shape and we uh, and uh, we restored the windows since it was still the original window. They just took took all the division out of them for many years ago. We put them in again. And we took the plastic paint off it and, uh, and had it whitewashed with a yellow color, since it's called the yellow palette. We had to take all the, the paint and the plaster work uh, off the building and, and start in a new. And um, uh, Kronborg Castle, uh, this is the place where we collected custom all uh, goods that has to go to Sweden and Finland and Russia and Estland and Lettland and Litauen and Germany and Poland uh, had to pass uh, this fortification. And there's only a, uh, one sea mile, that is a little more than a mile, uh, to Sweden. And that was also Denmark at that time. So we had this big canoes and stop everybody that uh, wanted to pass there and collected taxes and customs from them. And Denmark made a living for 500 years at this place. And uh, uh, by the way, this Kronborg Castle uh, was the place uh, uh, where Hamlet, Shakespeare's Hamlet was living there. And, uh, and um, he's maybe one of the few Danes you know. Uh, 
Um, but I would like to uh, not examine your your knowledge about Denmark, but uh, but uh, uh, to give you some idea of, of what a small country like Denmark can produce. Uh, you maybe know, know all of you uh, the, the novelist uh, Isaac Dinesen, who wrote Out of Africa. She lived a few miles south of this castle here. Uh, you will know Hans Christian Andersen, who, uh, who wrote all the fairy tales. He also come from Denmark. You will know Victor Borger. His name is Berger Rosenbaum. He also come from Denmark. He, he was a fugitive from the German occupation. Um, came to America through England. You will maybe know the, the Danish uh, nuclear physician Nils Bohr who was taken out of Denmark uh, by the Americans and brought to uh, New Mexico, I believe it was, to work with Oppenheimer. And uh, this was done because he was the one who uh, had uh, the knowledge of how to make a nuclear bomb. Uh, he made the theories that was made it able to, to uh, made it possible to make a nuclear bomb. And uh, um, the most funny thing uh, I can, uh, the, the most funny person I can, I could imagine is that maybe you know it was a Dane who wrote Stars and Stripes Forever. Uh, John Philip Sousa was a Dane. If you if you look in Who's Who in America, uh, you will read his Portuguese. And the German mother, but that's not that's not correct. He was born in Weile, Denmark, and his name was Sørensen. Um, uh, Danes who come to America will change this to Sørensen. And um, uh, he realized that he would never have people uh, pronouncing his name correct as Sørensen. So he chose to uh, change his name uh, to. Uh, I would say, Sons in USA. Uh, and if you look at his name, you will see that it, it says S O U S A, Susan. And uh, he was the guy that, uh, around the turn of the century, uh, created all the nice American marshes. He was the king of the marshes. Um, I, uh, I will not. Uh, compare myself with all these persons, but, but it stains. And this is the interior of the castle there. I, I did nothing uh, of this except for the floor here. In this room, uh, when it was restored, not by me, uh, there was 32 apartment for officers built into the room during the years. And uh, we had the chance of restoring the floor since we could, we digged out the, the the waters, uh, the, the fortification around the castle, and could find all the, the parts of the, the old stone floors, so we could reconstruct the, the, the patterns of the floor. Uh, here you see we work with the, with the, uh, uh, the waters around the castle. We actually uh, uh, take away tons of, of car load, truck loads of, of dirt this place, and this has not been done for hundreds of years. And I share you this picture to the right, which is from the same castle, Kronborg. Uh, uh, this is especially for the student, because uh, um, all of us architects tends to think that, that what we should do is create very big monuments, uh, huge constructions. Um, what I show you there is my work at, in paving the areas. During the years, it has been replaced and with asphalt paving. And um, I can assure you, it's a very hard work to replace asphalt with this stone and have it look as it has always been there. That's the hard work. But, uh, but I, in my opinion, I did uh, quite well, uh, since people 
people uh, people uh, ask me how we we uh, was able to keep this for so many years, and I said, "Well, we la <laughs> we made it last year." <laughs> and here's some details from it. So that that's um, the kind of work we have to prepare for all of us also. Uh, beside for for uh, those uh, royal castles, we had you know, good chance of working. We we also sometimes work with with churches, and I'll show you an example of uh, of a church that where we had to uh, redo the furniture since uh, since uh, the the benches had to be taken away from the from the walls, uh, and the uh, the heating. Uh, equipment was to be taken away, and we also had to redo the the floor um, and repaint everything. And so, so what you see here is that uh, we took away the the the, the false uh, baroque lighting and replaced it with this uh, small things, which is a sort of a uh, play on the crown of, of Jesus, the torn crown, and. Uh, it's it's flowers made in brass and uh, and aluminum metal and uh, there's a lot of small uh, quartz lamps in, in them. There's three of them, and uh, and we added these small lamps on the benches so so it sort of had this formal character in the church instead of the uh, the shelves that was uh, built. I actually these shelves and the lamps was put in there in 19. 42 and the church was built in 1203 and here you see the the, the lighting here and we also uh, uh, worked very hard to find uh, a tile for the floor that that sort of uh, could elucidate uh, the time the church was built and have the same character so uh, uh, this is a tile that we uh, we uh, worked together with uh, with the tile maker to burn and to color, so it it has exactly the character that we wanted for the church. And you see some of the lightings here. There's two small holes uh, beside the lighting. That means you can replace the lighting with a little uh, a brass thing where you can put flowers in instead. And there's in, actually there's a hole in this, so you can also have uh, the electric light, or you can have candle lights there. Uh, it's a tradition when there's a wedding, uh, uh, you will have white flowers uh, on each bench there, and uh, to Christmas time you will have candle lights. And um, uh, <coughs> this is my office in Copenhagen. I had, though I have to admit that, that my office in, is in the back building in the stables, the former stables. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of interesting because uh, uh, when we restored it, we also made a, uh, a historical survey. This is part of our business in Copenhagen. Uh, we found out that uh, Nils Bohr was born at the first floor in this uh, building, uh, son of a banker. And on the third floor, a guy which is named Dankmar Adler was born. He's the guy who was uh, partner to Sullivan before the turn of the century. And uh, he had to leave the country because he couldn't, uh, uh, he couldn't really uh, cope with his brother, who happens to, uh, to create the still biggest bank in Denmark the Copenhagen private bank. So um, he was not kicked out of the country, but it's, it seems that he, uh, he made a career for himself in Chicago. Dankmar Adler. We don't com compare ourselves with him later. But uh, um, this uh, restoration of the building, we made it for an American company, McKinsey and Company, a business consultant. And, uh, and um, we didn't do much with the facade. It was the interior we, we worked with. And here you see the, uh, the character of that kind of a building. This is a painting from uh, 
1793, I believe it, it is. The building is from 1795. All the buildings is from 1795 since the year before uh, this part of the, of the town burned down. Uh, and uh, a bricklayer actually bought three pieces of, of, of land there and built the big house uh, to rent it out. And this is some of the interior before and after. It's actually uh, the same uh, profiles and, uh, and details that we, we uh, recycle and use uh, in this building. We took away uh, about 30 rooms in this building. And uh, this is how it looks today. This is uh, our partner offices. They, they are kept uh, uh, rather uh, uh, in the old style. And another project, we uh, uh, restored this building, which is uh, the King's New Square, right in the center of the town, where we found out also during our historic survey that, that the the fences or the, the details around the windows was in fact uh, uh, from 1918, and the building is is rebuilt, and rebuilt, and rebuilt. It's it's originally it's a uh, half timbered house from 1630, and it's still behind the facade there. Um, we we uh, uh, did this for a Chinese who wanted a restaurant in the building. The, the new entrance. We moved the entrance from from uh, one of the streets out to the to the square. And uh, for another building from the 1600. We don't know when it was built, but this is one of the few left buildings uh, uh, from the very old Copenhagen. And, uh, actually, we uh, renewed the foundation under this uh, building and took the chance of. Uh, of doing something with the shop front there and uh, and uh, replast and repaint the building. This is the new shop front. There's a uh, lady uh, hairdresser in it, and this is the, the surface of the of the facade. And uh, uh, this is a um, apartment we made also in a building from from uh, 1795. Um, uh, in the old part of Copenhagen. Um, what you can't see in the picture, I forgot to take pictures before we started this restoration, but uh, but I can tell you that all the doors were smoothed and, uh, and uh, the floor material is uh, collected from some other rooms and so forth, so forth. So it's, it's uh, quite new uh, interior. And this is the new bathroom we built into to, uh, this house. That that is uh, uh, a normal standard for a Danish home. And, uh, uh, well, I will then show you, uh, since we speak about the profession in Denmark, uh, the standard that we 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 works with. Uh, this is actually a, a little kitchen in a, in a office building, uh, the one to the to the left, uh, with with normal equipment and. I try to do it very, very simple. And uh, the other picture shows a doctor's clinic, one of many we uh, made in an old building. And, uh, and um, we tried to make it very, very formal. So uh, since this guy, he is asking the ladies to take their clothes off. So I tried very much to create a uh, interior that doesn't resemble a, uh, a uh, living room. Or, or a nice place. I wanted to have it cool and technical, so it's no problem for a lady to take the clothes off. If, if you understand. Me. <laughs> and uh, uh, some restored uh, office space in, in uh, also in Copenhagen. I took the little picture there because we also made this hand wash which is just a uh, black uh, stone thing that with a little slope on it and the hole where the water comes out. So you can easily see this is not for the cleaning ladies, that's just to wash your hands. 
it's black, so it's hard to take photos of. And uh, I'll show you, uh, maybe you don't know that in Denmark there is so no such thing as a interior decorator. There's no offices that, that only do interior decoration or indoor uh, architecture. So uh, we do it ourselves. Maybe as worse as, as you may be expected to be, but uh, um, uh, it's unthinkable that an, a Danish architect would not uh, create all the rooms. If you should make a, a skyscraper in Denmark, uh, the architect will also do all the simple offices uh, and uh, make it so he's proud of this. Uh, I had uh, uh, this opportunity to redo a, a huge floor in a building from 1957 for a uh, uh, broker. And this is how the, the floor was looking uh, before and after, since I took away all the walls and, uh, and used the columns to make uh, uh, closets or, or cupboards. Uh, and this is actually the same room we look at here. And uh, here it comes out of the lift and uh, and uh, uh, go directly into uh, a reception. And uh, since there's a candlelight in the picture, it's, it's, it must be around Christmas time. Some details. We work very hard with the lights in, in this area, as you also could see on the other pictures. Uh, the lights in the, in the roof is, is uh, some small lamp, uh, yeah, lamps we, we made ourselves or designed ourselves also. And this is the, the, the executive director's uh, own office and his own toilet. We even designed the, the the fittings, uh, the steel one you see there with, with some electronic equipment so he can choose the temperature of the water. And uh, I'll show you a few examples of uh, what we also do. Very cheap uh, warehouses with uh, small office spaces in. Uh, when a uh, normal office in Denmark uh, would cost about 8,000 crowns per square meter. A square meter is nine square feet. Uh, we had to make this for 2,300 crowns. So we, we used uh, standard uh, uh, barn houses and that sort of thing and equipped them just a little nicer. And uh, uh, it sort of uh, tried to play with the with, uh, uh, element of lights instead of, of uh, hanging a uh, one light fitting to try to, to play with with uh, uh, the light so that I can create forms with it. And, uh, and uh, we never use wallpaper. We painted ourselves. This is, this is uh, a hall we made with a uh, very dark blue color. And all the, the gilt and the decorations is uh, actually uh, 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 put there by myself and the youngest architect of the office. We did that. Uh, one night uh, and took the chance of, of uh, making very many variations uh, in, the, in the pattern so so it sort of uh, flows up from 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 the lower floor to the next floor and, and, and gets more and more of them and uh, uh, this is the uh, work we do in the office Oh, excuse me, in the, uh, the studio here in Ball State. And uh, we chose in the studio to work with infill. Infill uh, is uh, rebuilding or, or try to fill in holes in the town. And this is the, the so-called boys block uh, here in the city of Mansi. And uh, you will see a few examples of what the students did. Suggestions for for a 
say it to uh, uh, a uh, small office building they were asked to put in there. Uh, I can tell you that, that these students, this is, uh, I took the liberty to show the most interesting of them, of course, but I can tell you that the student did a wonderful work, and I was very surprised at the quality of work they could do. Uh, this is 50 year students, and, uh, and you can really look forward to see these this, uh, guys uh, uh, in the profession in the future. It's very promising. I also asked them the, in a very short time to uh, design a, uh, a one-piece band for wristwatches. Um, and many interesting solutions come up there. The one to the, to the left is a uh, simple piece of rubber that gets its strength for, from uh, clipping in the, the actual machine, the watch. And, uh, and the other one is uh, 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 a very artistic approach to, to, uh, to this uh, actually technical problem. I uh, had the freedom to suggesting that, that, uh, that uh, the, the bands there should be made of elephant hair. But I was sort of uh, kicked out of the studio because you can't do this today. And uh, uh, at the left-hand side, you see uh, a simple thing as a uh, bag, a brown bag from the Mars supermarket that can be folded and uh, gain enough strength to be a very nice band for your watch. Wonderful project and very nicely presented. And uh, the other one, you will see a... Uh, a, a wonderful uh, uh, new technology, or uh, well, it's, it's maybe not new technology, it's just a wonderful idea that uh, instead of having a, uh, a, a, a two arms that that uh, works within the uh, crystals, of course you just uh, uh, light up the actual time uh, with the, the zippers or the digits and uh, there's no moving part in it. Wonderful approach. Um, that was it. Uh, I am uh, sorry that I spend a little more time than, than I was supposed to. Um, I will uh, be prepared to uh, to answer the question you may have. And I will not be as arrogant as uh, one speaker we had here on night who said, now I'm tired and I will accept four questions. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, answer as many as we can manage before you have to go to the show over here, which I recommend very highly. And I'm happy with this, no questions. And there is no. Thank you for coming.